In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add images inside of Adobe Spark. What's up guys, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Nate Hibbert and this is Wingman University where our goal is to help you start and scale a print on demand business. Over the last several months, I've gotten a lot of questions about Adobe Spark and specifically how to add images inside of Adobe Spark. So today I thought I'd make a quick video about how to use the images built into Adobe and how to upload your own image. So let's go ahead and jump into Spark. Here we are inside of Spark. We've got our artboard over here already set up for a KDP book, the right sizing. We've got our uh, div middle divider here that will be the spine of the book. And then we've got our toolbox over here on the right hand side. And so we're gonna interact with our toolbox to add some photos by going up to this add button represented by this plus symbol. That's gonna give us a few options, but we wanna focus in on photo today. Once we click photo, it's gonna give us again, some more options here. And this is where we get to decide, are we gonna upload our own photo by clicking this, which will bring you to your file explorer, or are we gonna use some free photos inside of Adobe Spark that's actually provided by two different companies, which we'll show in just a second. Um, but also if you have photos in any of these other places in Lightroom or in your Dropbox or Google Photos, or even your Google Drive, you can upload them here as well. Um, it's all integrated as long as you signed into these accounts, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to start with the finding the free photos and show you the two different platforms um, that Adobe Spark has partnered with. And they have partnered with Unsplash and Pixel Bay. Um, I myself am a lot more familiar with Unsplash, and so that's why I have this selected. But you can select Pixel Bay as well, and it will give you a whole different assortment of photos. Basically, what it's doing is just sort searching their inventory for photos, and they have a partnership that allows us to use these photos for our projects, which is super cool. So I'm going to go back to Unsplash, and I already typed in Woods because for this example, I just wanted to show you guys what a Woods journal would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click this image here, and it's going to give me two different options now that I actually have selected an image that I want on my artboard. I can either move this around freely or I can pin it to the background. And for this, because I want it to cover the entire background, I am going to pin it to the background. And what that's going to do is it's going to put it underneath my spine exactly how I want it, but it's going to allow us to use this image now for our journal cover, which is awesome. To show you the other way to upload photos, I'm going to go back up to this add button, the little plus up here, go to photos, and then I'm going to use upload photos. Remember I said this button would take us to our file explorer. So when I click this, it's going to show me my download file and I have this headshot here. So say I wanted to put my face on the back of this journal. Once I upload it, it's gonna give me again two options, but instead of pinning it to the background this time or adding it to the collage as it says now, I wanna move this around freely so I can just have my face down here small on the back of the book. So I'm gonna hit move freely. It's probably gonna put it somewhere towards the center. And once this loads in, I can just click and drag this where I want it. It might take a second uploading your own photo. Some of these pictures can be kind of big, but that's all right. So we're gonna now click and drag this into the position that I want it. I just want it small back here. And then I can add some text, a font cover, uh, and really start designing this thing. So now I have my image where I would like it, and I'm going to add a title to this book. So I'm gonna go to add text. I'm gonna add my own text here, and I'll just call this a tree journal. Once we hit done, that should populate in here. And then I'm gonna just spend some time at tweaking this, looking for things like removing the shape maybe on the back end and finding a font that I like, or maybe just using my favorite font. Uh, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details of all this. I could spend all day messing around with the different fonts and the titles and all that. Uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist as a graphic designer. If you'd like to learn more about Spark and see me actually use this tool for our print on demand business, you can click these playlists over here. And until the next video, I'll see you guys around.